Good morning, Friday the 18th of March. Genesis chapter 43, the first 15 verses. The story continues. Um, Jacob and his sons, Jacob, remember, also sometimes referred to as Israel, um, realized that the food they had purchased some good period of time before has come to an end. And so he says to the sons, please go back to Egypt and purchase more food. And they remind him um, that they can't go back unless they take their youngest son, Benjamin, with. And uh, Jacob, of course, is very loath to do that. He's already lost the firstborn to Rachel. And now they want, or he's a frightened, a fearful, that Benjamin, the secondborn, and only those two sons that were born to Rachel, may also perish. Um, you wonder whether he'd really forgotten what was happening, or he thought that somehow by um, ignoring it, the problem would go away. We notice that it is Judah who comes to the fore. He does the talking. Reuben is hardly mentioned again. And remember, Reuben being the firstborn of all the brothers would carry some form of superiority, but he has lost that because of his uh, prior sinful behavior. So we see Judah coming to the fore. And Judah does convince his father that Benjamin um, should accompany them and he, Judah, would take personal responsibility. And the father resigns himself to the fact and, and, and says, almost as if he's being a slight bit of a martyr here, if I'm bereaved, then I'm bereaved. The brothers go off and they present themselves to Joseph. They are very fearful of what's going to happen. And Joseph greets them. He acknowledges the presence of um, his brother, Benjamin. Remember that none of the brothers are recognizing Joseph at all. And Joseph says, I wish to eat with you today. And um, the main meal then was always a lunchtime meal. And so he said, please go through to my house and I will meet you there for the meal. They are, they are really scared. They think they've now just become slaves, slaves to Joseph, and that's why they have to go to his house, and they're going to have to serve him, and their donkeys will be confiscated, and all their money taken, and that'll be the end of it. Um, and so they sort of plead with the steward that accompanies them, and, and he reassures them and says, no, no, um, everything is fine. Please do not be frightened. And then they tell the steward, um, about the money that had been put back into their sacks, the, the purchase price for the grain on their first trip had been returned to them, and they assumed it was a mistake, and they assure the steward that they brought that money back, plus more to buy more food. And the steward, interestingly, says, but that must be then the action of your God, because um, I received the money that you had paid for the grain. Um, the steward obviously is acknowledging that their God is all-powerful and can do whatever he wants, but it raises perhaps the, the, the specter that the steward is just being very uh, polite and saying with a smile, um, I know what happened, but don't worry, or whether he truly did believe that they had paid for the grain, and it was perhaps Joseph who put um, silver back into the sacks. Uh, somehow we'll never know the answer to that. So they are a little bit more relaxed. Uh, Joseph Julie arrives at noon and they sit down and enjoy a meal together. And they are somewhat astonished because Joseph gets them to sit in the precise order of their age. And they look at each other with astonishment because in a sense it raises the question, how would this man, this Egyptian, um, how would he know what our ages are? Um, and, and Joseph gives special treatment to his brother uh, Benjamin because it is his immediate blood brother. And, and so the story ends there, except because it's the weekend and I, I won't be sharing on Saturday and Sunday and Monday, uh, please do read ahead yourself and find out what's happening. When I talk again, I will be doing so from, from Cape Town. We're going down for um, our youngest daughter, Rachel, who had her firstborn uh, last week, Friday. So little baby Maya is exactly one week old. Um, and I will endeavor to do my little talks from Cape Town, but I think it could be a little chaotic in the house with other people and, of course, a little child. Um, they, they, they don't keep quiet, do they? Um, but read the story and, and find out. So what can we conclude from this? That, as we said yesterday, God works on the, uh, he has a long plan, and we tend to have a very short timetable, 
Uh, but trust God and work with God. God will bring the right people into your into your presence, just as God brought Joseph into the presence of his brothers. Um, and somehow God engineered all of that right from the time when Joseph was captured by his brothers, sold as a slave. God used this evil deed, and it was an evil deed. He used that awful traumatic experience to actually lay down a future. What, what has God done for your future? He hasn't just left it laissez-faire. He has a plan for you, and somebody will come onto your path. There may be a Christian. There may not be. There might be family. There may not be. God has a plan. Trust to God. Just trust to God in your life. You need to carry your side of the bargain. Be faithful and obedient to God. Read scripture. Understand it. Develop that relationship with God. But overall, trust God. He has your future in the palm of his hands. You don't. So don't stress about it. Let God be God. Folks, have a good weekend. We'll chat next week. God bless.